Welcome everyone to our roundtable discussion entitled Documenting for Diversity, the Case of 1,000 Women in Religion. My name is Colleen Hartung, and I am coordinator for the 1,000 Women in Religion Wikipedia project. This project coalesced as a way of addressing gender bias and the sources of knowledge that identify the notable contributions of individuals in religious traditions, in history books, in institutional archives, in news media, and in sacred texts. This project found its primary focus with a concern for how this information ultimately makes its way onto tertiary platforms like Wikipedia. The 1,000 Women in Religion list contains more than 1,500 individuals. These women are noteworthy as founders, practitioners, teachers, resistors, and researchers of the world's religious and wisdom traditions. Yet, in spite of their significance, they do not have a biographical article on Wikipedia. It's also worth noting that there are many women important to the development of the world's religions who are not even on the list because we have little to no access to reliable secondary sources that record their accomplishments. Atla Open Press's Women in Religion series is a response to the problems editors are having meeting Wikipedia's notability standards for their biographical submissions. The biographers in these volumes address issues of equity and inclusion by celebrating the unrecognized yet noteworthy work of women activists in religious, spiritual, and wisdom traditions. For the most part, these are women who responded to the needs of the religious and secular communities where they lived and worked without the benefit of publicly recorded accolades, awards, or academic celebrity, documenting their noteworthy accomplishments by writing their biographies addresses the deficit of secondary sources about their lives. This allows us to create a more inclusive and equitable understanding of women's contributions generally and in the history of religious and wisdom traditions specifically. This roundtable discussion describes this effort to publish a series of peer-reviewed edited volumes of biographies covering notable women. Clifford Anderson from Vanderbilt University will take us through the differences between primary, secondary, and tertiary sources, and how these distinctions contribute to the undercoverage of women across multiple Wikimedia projects. Polly Hamlin, author, Christine Meyer, an extremely engaged Wikipedian, and myself, series editor for Atlas Women in Religion series, will describe our roles in this project. Harry Byrne from the University of Divinity in Melbourne and founder of the Australian Women in Religion offshoot of the 1000 Women in Religion Wikipedia project will take us through her experience of the global collaborative nature of this publishing effort. Hi, my name is Cliff Anderson. I'm the Associate University Librarian for Research and Digital Strategy at Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee in the US. And my Wikipedia username is Clifford underscore Anderson. The topic of my section is the relationship between notability and original research as a motivating factor of the Thousand Women in Religion project. As we all know, a central rule of Wikipedia is no original research. Wikipedia is an encyclopedia, not a compendium of all possible knowledge. In their articles, Wikipedians seek to synthesize scholarly and popular literature. In the effort, they also strive to include differences of opinion, articulating disagreements from a neutral point of view. If published sources do not yet exist about a topic, that does not mean that the topic is not significant, but it does mean that the topic is not right for summarization on Wikipedia. In the parlance of Wikipedia, its notability has not been established. These rules have served Wikipedia over the course of the past 20 years. They have prevented the efflorescence of idiosyncratic, biased, and opinionated articles in Wikipedia. While editors may believe in the significance of some historical figure whom scholars have overlooked, Wikipedia is not the proper forum to establish any person's notability. Rather, we ought to make that case in reputable scholarly literature, providing grist for the mill of a Wikipedia article on the subject. The bread and butter of Wikipedia articles is the published scholarly record. As a librarian, I maintain the stacks of literature, but not bound up with string, that editors draw on to document 
and describe notable people, places, and events of past and present. There's a saying that goes back to the early days of Wikipedia that sums up the prohibition on original research. Namely, Wikipedia is a tertiary source. While not canonical because there are so many exceptions to this perspective, the saying reflects well that Wikipedia is neither a primary source or a secondary source. That is, Wikipedia is not the place to reproduce and document primary sources. Though primary sources may be quoted from time to time in articles, editors should leave the documentation of those sources to archivists, genealogists, and the like. For similar reasons, Wikipedia is not a secondary source. As noted, Wikipedia is not the place to argue for a new perspective on a historical figure or event. Wikipedia art editors rely on others to maintain and challenge the scholarly status quo by debating back and forth about those topics in periodicals and monographs. Wikipedia is a tertiary source that synthesizes the scholarly record on a particular topic, providing warrants for an article's claims by references to secondary and occasionally primary sources. The problem comes when we face the biases of previous generations. What happens if a woman accomplished a great deal in her lifetime, but her contemporaries did not credit her properly with those achievements? If Wikipedia is essentially a tertiary source, what happens when we find plenty of primary sources, but very few, if any, secondary ones? There are now projects underway to address systematic historical bias in secondary sources. For instance, the New York Times launched a project in 2018 called Overlooked, with the goal of addressing selection bias in its obituary pages. As the introduction to the project notes, who gets remembered and how inherently involves judgment. To look back at the obituary archives can, therefore, be a stark lesson in how society valued various achievements and achievers. Amisha Padnani, editor on the obituaries desk at the New York Times, spearheaded a project to address these biases by commissioning contemporary obituaries of women who should have received, received notice in the Times pages, but did not. She contends, quote, I now had an opportunity to give these women their due. This initiative not only serves to inform the public about these notable women, who range from Ada Lovelace to Henrietta Lacks, but also provides a gift to Wikipedians. For instance, Sewell Chan's 2018 obituary about Marsha P. Johnson, a gay rights activist in New York City, is now cited several times in the corresponding Wikipedia article. If Wikipedia must essentially synthesize the scholarly record, must editors wait around until organizations like the New York Times have rectified the public record? What if journalists and scholars never get around to writing that rectification? As editors, is there no way to overcome this kind of historical blindness and injustice without violating the norms of Wikipedia? Here is where the genius and hard work of Colleen Hartung and her fellow members of the Thousand Women in Religion Project comes to expression. As you'll learn from our fellow panelists, Participants in the Thousand Women in Religion Project seek to backfill these gaps in secondary literature by writing and publishing reliable scholarly articles about women pastors, professors, and religious leaders. These articles, in turn, provide the basis for writing about these women on Wikipedia. Since the books are published with open access licenses, members of the Wikimedia community can readily read and use them to create new articles. But a final note to avoid misunderstanding. The contributors to this project are keenly aware of the potential conflicts of interest in the undertaking. To avoid the dangers of self-publishing, Hartung and colleagues have initiated a series at Atla Press, which is, quote, a membership association of librarians and informational professionals committed to advancing the study of religion and theology. An editorial board of librarians oversees the Atla Press, ensuring that its publications meet the prevailing scholarly standards. And another best practice the group follows is encouraging someone other than the author of the chapter to write the corresponding Wikipedia article about its subject. The goal is not to defend any author's historical perspective or take on a particular person, but to showcase women who have contributed notably to the study and practice of religion, but whose activities have been unjustly neglected in the scholarly literature. The lives of people who identify as women and who focus on more collaborative efforts and coalition building are undercovered in all types of media, in trade books, in academic writing, in journals, in newspapers, on television, and social media. 
This culture-wide lack of reliable, verifiable secondary sources is one of the major stumbling blocks for those of us working to increase the representation of women on Wikipedia. Hence the idea for the Women in Religion series and our partnership with ATLA Open Press. Claiming notability for women activists in religion is the first volume in this series. With this series, we have two goals, at least. Number one, the series aims to improve the coverage and availability of secondary sources about women important to the development, practice, and study of the world's religious, spiritual, and wisdom traditions. We address this bias by writing about women whose noteworthy lives and works should be part of our everyday knowledge about the history and practice of religion worldwide. They are not. However, those of us involved with this series and with the 1,000 Women in Religion Wikipedia project are well aware that writing 10 biographies in a volume or even 100 biographies in a series or even more 1,000 biographies on Wikipedia is not going to do much to shift the dial on gender bias that characterizes our culture, our tastes in biographies, our representation of women in religion on digital encyclopedic practices platforms like Wikipedia, and so forth. And so the series has a second, perhaps more important goal. In, in the writing of the biographies, we aim to challenge and extend concepts like notability, neutral point of view, and conflict of interest by engaging in a critique and exploration of issues having to do with equity and gender parity in the production of knowledge by and about women. In the long run, it is a critical engagement with these concepts and issues that will change our ways of thinking about what kinds of contributions are worthy of noting, which will allow us to more fully represent the lives and works of people who identify as women. In the first volume of the Women in Religion series, and in those that follow, we develop research and writing strategies that are informed by this critique and exploration, allowing us to lift up the works of influential women who aren't necessarily recognized as leaders or founders, but who nonetheless had contributed and continue to have a profound impact on the development and practice of, as well as knowledge, as well as our knowledge about religious traditions. To this point in time, most of these women have been marginalized as secondary background supporters to history's male movers and shakers. This series aims to deploy biographical writing as a strategy for refocusing our attention onto the contributions of these unrecognized but significant women of influence. We do this by moving their lives and their ways of being in and shaping the world to the foreground in a biography so we can learn from and celebrate their mighty work. So with this first volume, we take a look at Wikipedia's notability guidelines for significant coverage and reliable independent secondary sources. We look at these notability guidelines as they are a reflection of cultural definitions and social customs that determine notoriety. The great men that most often occupy this category are conquering generals, popes, famous authors, titans of industry, leaders of expeditions that discover new worlds, geniuses that discover scientific wonders, and more. The feminist-oriented perspective that grounds this project rejects this patriarchal, hierarchical framework. It's not that women can't be all those things and more. They can, and they are, though in more limited numbers because of gender bias and discrimination. The biographers in this volume take into account all the ways their subjects fulfill our standard expectations around notability. They honor their su subjects' traditional achievements as founders. They celebrate their pioneering accomplishments in leadership roles that they assume at the local, regional, national, and international levels. They do this to make a strategic, traditional, culturally irrefutable claim about their subjects' notability. Then on these foundations, they move deeper into their subjects' lives in ways that critique and extend these familiar and biased standards. 
The second volume in the series, entitled Challenging Bias Through Biographies of Women, Academics, and Religion, addresses the question of why it is that women who study religion and wisdom traditions in academia and who are themselves pro prolific producers of secondary sources remain conspicuously absent as biographical subjects on tertiary digital platforms like Wikipedia. The biographies in this volume creatively engage the sourcing and related writing conventions that govern academic writing and editing on tertiary digital knowledge platforms including notability, conflict of interest, neutral point of view, verifiability and reliability, and citational and hyperlinking guidelines. Through their critical and constructive engagement with these guidelines, they create more expansive and inclusive biographical narratives. Volume 3, which is in its beginning stages of production, considers the ways the way issues of knowledge equity results in the undercoverage of women in religious and spiritual traditions, traditions around the world by writing biographies about women who have been important contributors to the parliament of the world's religions. So why is this project focused on the production of secondary sources important? Number one, we are writing women back into history, lifting them from the footnotes, library archives, and local histories into the foreground as the subject of a biography. By this act, we are rewriting history as a whole by creating a more inclusive accounting of the important contributions of women, an accounting that provides a more accurate and equitable representation of the role of women. Number two, because the works of women are undercovered, their influence and contributions are undersided in secondary literature. This has consequences in terms of tenure and other types of advancement for the careers of women who have done noteworthy work that does not get shared as widely as it should. It also has consequences for the careers of the women they mentor. And number three, and most importantly for Wikipedia, we are helping to shift the dial on gender bias in the general culture and on tertiary platforms like Wikipedia by shifting our collective thinking about what counts as notable and about best writing and research practices. If you haven't yet, I encourage you to read the full chapters about the incredible women covered in volume one and to follow along as further volumes are published. Watch for volume two this fall. As well, we invite you to participate as biographers in future volumes and in the larger 1000 Women in Religion Wikipedia project. Hi, my name is Polly Hamlin. And I'm here to talk a little bit about the experience of writing biographies for the Women in Religion series. I'm a member of our 1000 Women in Religion Wiki project, and I am a Wikipedian. And I have been writing articles about women in religion for our project on Wikipedia. Um, and I was part of the conversations that we were having about the challenge of doing that, of getting enough resources and, and good secondary sources for biographies. And so I volunteered to write a, a biography for our first volume, and then I wrote one for our second as well. And I'm in the process of writing one for our third. It's been a great experience. I'd never written a biography before, but I've learned a lot in the process. And so I just wanted to speak a little bit about, about the process and, and about the challenges and about um, what I've learned from the, from the project. The first person I wrote about was Reverend Dr. Yvonne B. Delp, and she was um, an African, well, she is, excuse me, she's still living. She's an African-American uh, clergywoman. She was the first African-American woman ordained in the UCC, which is a mainline Protestant denomination here in the United States. And she's a real leader in racial justice work. She was the head of the UCC's Office for Church and Society for many years, and um, really a visible spokesperson for the church but also active uh, in calling the church to account on racism and also active in ecumenical work on, on issues around social justice and particularly around racial justice. So I wanted to write about her as a pioneer in the church and uh, to highlight the work that she'd done on, that, on various social justice issues. My second biography was Dr. Isabel Apawo Fieri. She is currently the Deputy General Secretary of the World Council of Churches. She's from Malawi. And she became a professor of religion. She studied, um, she studied religious studies and biblical scholarship 
and she uh, eventually moved to South Africa where she began teaching and be eventually became the head of the School of Religion and Philosophy and Classics at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. So she's really somebody who's been very influential both in religious education, ecumenically, and also within her own denomination, um, but also just globally as a leader within the World Council of Churches. She's really an important uh, figure. She's also a founding member of the Circle of Concerned African Women Theologians, which is a really important group in Africa that has been fostering and encouraging uh, women theologians to write and publish um, theology. And she served as their general secretary for a period of time of six year term. So she's really been influential both in the continent of Africa and also globally. So I wanted to highlight both of these women because they are underrepresented in the literature. There hasn't been a full length biography of either of these women. And I wanted to make sure that their um, accomplishments were wider, were, were better known and more widely known. So one of the challenges of doing this is that um, we are writing chapters, not full length biographies. So I had uh, five particular goals that I wanted to achieve with these articles. One is obviously to highlight the notability of these women's achievements, but the other was to um, situate their work in a larger context. So I wanted to show how their work impacted both their religious tradition and also society um, as a whole. Um, and both of these women have had real impacts on um, institutions and society um, in, their, in their context. Um, I also wanted to re recognize the long-term impacts of their work and the ways in which they influenced people who came after them, the way that they opened doors as pioneering women. I wanted to provide basic biographical detail so that if someone was able to, to write a Wikipedia article, they would be able to draw on this um, biography for specifics about their life so that they would have the sources they need. That We know that from writing biographies of women on Wikipedia that that can often be a challenge to find enough uh, credible sources uh, that provide biographical details. And my fifth goal really was to gather sources that would be useful for other researchers, either Wikipedians who are looking for other sources to corroborate um, notability, or if there are people interested in these women as religious scholars or in other settings, they would be able to um, have sources that they could follow up on for more information about these women. Uh, research is something that I really enjoy, so I got a lot of pleasure out of going to various archives and library collections to learn more about these women. I use the Congregational Library here in Boston where I live, and they were extremely helpful in helping me find interesting articles uh, from magazines published by the United Church of Christ. And I even traveled to Geneva, Switzerland, to do some research in the archives of the World Council of Churches. This was before the pandemic, so I was able to get there. But um, I've also accessed a lot of information digitally. Um, I've been able to use interlibrary loans. The Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture in New York City has been helpful. They are an excellent resource for anyone interested in African American culture. Um, I have used Google Books and the Internet Archive. And I've also used a lot of academic publications, particularly um, using databases like uh, JSTOR or um, ProQuest has been very helpful for finding articles. Um, and those are often require a membership. So I've done that through library um, access. And uh, it's nice to be able to have access to those articles and then to pull out the relevant information and include it in um, my biography. So that's one of the things that I think that open source biographies can offer, which is they can help. Um, first of all, you're not allowed to do uh, original research as a Wikipedian. So by doing the original research as a biographer, you're able to get that archival material or that primary source material and put it into the article. And then also you can access things that are either not digitized or are behind a paywall. And you can take the relevant information, put it into this biography, which is now open source, and that information then can be accessed by people on the internet. So that's one of the things that I think is a value add of this project, is to take all of this research and make it more easily accessible to people. Anybody who can access the article can then access the information. Um, and there are a few challenges in writing a good biography. So I found it difficult to keep to the right length. I always wanted to include more information because I was fascinated by these women. Um, I had to struggle around 
the information of how much detail to include and, and what is too much information um, because I'm very interested in the subject matter but I had to remember that others might not need every detail and also trying to write for a general audience so that was important too that um, make sure that this was readable for somebody who didn't necessarily come in with a background um, on religious studies but could really kind of understand how these women were influential um, in their fields without necessarily having insider knowledge. And the final challenge was writing about somebody who is living. I interviewed both of these women, which was a terrific advantage, and it was wonderful to be able to have that opportunity and to take that information and include it in the biography. Um, but it also meant that I will be writing about someone who is still living and would read the biography. And so that was kind of a, a mental challenge is to figure out how to write respectfully, but also honestly, and include information that uh, should be included, but also to keep in mind that this would be read by somebody. Um, and I'm pleased to say that both uh, women have been pleased with the work and appreciative that somebody took the time to write about them. And, and they were both surprised that uh, somebody would be interested in writing about their life. But actually, both of them are extremely interesting women. And I'm very glad to have uh, written their biographies. And I hope that they will lead to um, people being interested in writing more about these two women. And I hope for Reverend Delk that somebody will write a biography for her on Wikipedia. Um, somebody has already done so for Dr. Peary, and that, that, is, uh, that is good to know. So thank you. Hello, I'm Christine Meyer, username figure skating fan. I am a graduate student in, in the English department at the University of Idaho and a longtime Wikipedian. My niches on Wikipedia include children's television programming, figure skating, Maya Angelou, and for the, and for the last 14 months, female saints. My involvement with the 1000 Women in Religion Wiki Project began in June 2020. It's been one of the ways that I have coped with COVID-19. Actually, if it weren't for COVID, I probably wouldn't have become involved with the project because that's when they moved to virtual edit-a-thons and planning sessions and meetings. And if they hadn't, I probably wouldn't have gotten involved. My role as a member of the 1000 Women in Religion Wiki Project is as the resident editing expert. I've been able to share my expertise with Wikipedia policies and editing techniques, some of the more te technical aspects, which has been fun and I think has made some difference. I've also researched, created, and improved about 50 biographies about female saints. And since one of our goals, as Colleen already stated, is to create content about women religious, these saints are typically obscure and their bios have been shorter in length, sometimes stubbling. As of August, 2021, our members have created and improved about 170 bios about women religious, which doesn't sound impressive until you take into account that we're a smaller and younger project and that most of these articles were created during an, a global pandemic. Also, as Colleen suggested, the challenges of creating content about female saints has been research. In other words, finding reliable sources about them. Consequently, my skills as a researcher and scholar have improved a great deal because of my involvement with the 1000 Women in Religion Project. Volume one of the Atlas series, which Colleen also referred to, has made my life as a Wikipedia editor easier. There are 10 subjects in the book, but at the time of its publication in 2020, only one had a, a biographical article on Wikipedia. Currently, there are two. I created and worked on the second one about May Eleanor Frey, 
a Pentecostal preacher, pastor, and evangelist who was the first woman ordained in the American Baptist denomination in the U.S. As I said before, the biggest challenge for many of articles about women religious has been sources. But thanks to the author of the bio about Frey, Debbie Fulthrup, who's a member of the 1000 Women in Religion Project, much of the research needed for Frey's bio on Wikipedia was already done for me. This is a great example of what a wiki project can do and the difficult task of creating content about women religious and by extension by other underrepresented populations, both in secondary sources and on Wikipedia. One of the things I learned from working on Frey's article is that I was able to include information and content that Full Throat chose not to due to her choices of an author um, of as the author of a biography in a published volume. And really that's okay. Many people think that we as Wikipedia editors have severe limitations placed on us due to the tertiary nature of Wikipedia and its policies and procedures. But my experience in this instance demonstrates that that's not always true. It demonstrates that we need to know how to learn, how to use our resources fully. In other words, we shouldn't just use the sources, we need to use the sources that our sources use. Thanks to Fullthrop's biography about, Prey, about Frey, I was able to do that. One of the things I love about editing Wikipedia is that I get to learn new stuff and learn about people I wouldn't otherwise know about. People like May Eleanor Frey. Her story is much like the stories of the obscure female states, saints I've studied in the past year. Women who followed their hearts and, and, and had agency, wanted to have agency over their own bodies. Frey, for example, was so committed to the spirituality, teachings, and theology of Pentecostalism that she left a denomination that ordained women for a religious tradition that did not. She, like many other women religious we've been able to bring attention to, overcame great obstacles to, as I said before, follow her heart and the path she felt led to embark upon, sometimes at the expense of their own lives. I'm proud as a Wikipedia editor and member of the 1000 Women in Religion Project to be part of giving them the attention they deserve. Hi everyone, my name is Kerry Boone and I'm the Library Manager at Mannix Library, which is an academic theological library associated with the University of Divinity located in Melbourne, Australia. I'm the coordinator of the Australian Women in Religion Project, which is an offshoot of the 1000 Women in Religion Wikipedia Project. I first heard about the International Project at a conference in 2019 and initiated the Australian Project at my university soon after. Until I started working on the project, I hadn't edited Wikipedia at all, so at times it has been a steep learning curve, but one that I thoroughly enjoyed. I'm really committed to contributing whatever way I can to addressing the gender bias and knowledge gap issues that currently exist on Wikipedia, and my involvement with this project has provided that opportunity. Today I'm speaking specifically about the Australian Women in Religion Project, its progress to date and future directions. My hope is that our experience can be used as a case study for others and that this collaborative initiative can serve as a model for those working on other regional and or topic focused wicked projects around the world. As I already mentioned, my involvement in the project started back in 2019. Initially a small group of interested people from the University of Divinity was established. We got great institutional buy-in right from the start when the university added a target of creating 100 new Wikipedia articles for Australian women in religion to its strategic plan. And this was really important in raising the profile of the project. The working group met several times and we had um, scheduled and publicised our first editathon for April 2020. And then the COVID-19 pandemic put an end to many of our plans for that year. This resulted in my early focus 
shifting to compiling the list of names of Australian women. The list is really at the heart of the Australian Women in Religion project. I took a systematic approach to building the list and it has been compiled from a range of recognised sources and publications, as well as suggestions from individuals throughout the project. The list has now grown to over 500 names and continues to grow as new names are discovered. Those listed are all women who have made noteworthy contributions to religious and spiritual traditions in Australia. Many have also had significant roles in fields such as education, health and social justice. We've tried to ensure diversity on the list with women coming from a variety of religious traditions and occupations. And the list includes founders of institutions, missionaries, religious sisters, feminist theologians, researchers and academics, indigenous women, ministers, activists, philanthropists, and both historical figures and contemporary women. However, our list is not just a list of names. It's actually a large Excel spreadsheet that also contains a lot of relevant information about each woman. This includes basic biographical data, as well as URLs for useful secondary sources. We also noted which women already had a Wikipedia page and if the article may be a stub that could do with improving. Another focus was on including details about various unique identifiers where they existed for each woman. These included VIAF numbers, ORCID IDs, and various national library identifiers, which are available for those that have a publication record. One significant identifier in our Australian context is whether a woman is included in the Australian Dictionary of Biography, as this is an automatic indicator of notability. Other local identifiers include having an article listing in the Australian Women's Register or in the Encyclopedia of Women and Leadership in 20th Century Australia. Like others have mentioned previously, difficulties exist with meeting Wikipedia's notability requirements because of the tendency for women to not receive the significant coverage in reliable secondary sources that they require. One of the priorities when compiling our list has been to focus on various notability markers when collating biographical information. So things like academic degrees, awards, influence in the public sphere, leadership positions and roles in significant organisations have all been important. Once the list was fairly complete, I went through the process of getting all of this data into Wikidata, and this was done using the Quick Statements tool. One of the fields loaded into Wikidata as part of this process indicates that a woman is on the focus list for the Thousand Women in Religion Wikimedia project. This meant that after the batch load was done, all of the women on the Australian list were included on several automatically generated lists of women of interest to the international project. One of these lists is the Women in Red list, which includes all the women that still require a Wikipedia article to be written about them. The other list includes all the women on the focus list and so has a combination of red links and blue links when the woman has a Wikipedia article. And the object objective of the project is to change as many of the red links to blue links as we can. So what has the Australian project achieved to date? Firstly, I've continued to attend the Thousand Women in Religion Project Committee and editing meetings, as well as the meetings with the Australian Working Group. The initial working group has evolved over time. It was originally a group of colleagues at the university, high degree by research students, academic staff, researchers and professional staff. And it now includes members from other universities, members of Wikimedia Australia, independent scholars, and other participants interested in the project. It's been really rewarding to be working in partnership with so many individuals, and it's certainly been a great collaborative effort. Early on in the project, I created a web page to provide information about the Australian project, as well as links to the master list of names and other useful resources. One of the tabs on our web page also includes the list of new Wikipedia articles that have been created for women on the Australian list. One of the sources that uh, one of the resources that we created is a bibliography of useful secondary sources, which includes websites as well as print sources. At Mannix Library, we also created a women in religion display to make some of these print resources easily accessible to local editors. We also created a Wikipedia article guide for some participants who are interested in the project but who didn't necessarily want to become Wikipedians. This enables them to create an article in a Word document with a more experienced editor can then use to create the Wikipedia article.
We've now held two successful editathons, one face-to-face -face in March 2021 and one Zoom event in June 2021. And these have helped us to train up new editors. And while anyone is welcome to participate, there have tended to be more women than men at our events. So we're also helping to address the problem of 10% of Wikipedia editors being men and the resulting gendered bias on the platform. The project dashboard created for the editathons continues to collate statistical data related to our project. And we continue to promote the project via social media and online articles. We now have a tab on the web page that lists any media report about the project. Engagement with Mickey Wikimedia Australia has been fabulous. They've provided us with a local wiki community and expertise from members of that group who've been very generous with their willingness to assist our project. The association has also promoted our project and events and provided expert Wikipedians to facilitate our editathons. We've been really fortunate to have three successful grant applications. One enabled me to employ a part-time research assistant in 2022, and another two will facilitate several activities associated with the project, including the digitization of some significant primary source material and establishing an online repository for these resources. The intention is to make these resources available, available for scholarship and of course to provide reliable secondary sources for future Wikipedia articles. And editorial assistance for a forthcoming publication will also be able to be funded. The University of Divinity has also appointed a Wikipedia visiting scholar. We were really fortunate to have an experienced editor from the United States who was a member of the Thousand Women in Religion project team volunteer to work with us on the Australian project. And this arrangement is now being used as a pilot project by Wikimedia Australia. The Australian project has now created over 70 new articles in addition to improving many existing articles and this work will continue. Several new articles have also featured in the Did You Know section on the Wikimedia main page. Part of the project has also been to identify low hanging fruit, the women who already had significant secondary sources and to learn from the process of creating these articles first. After our first two editathons, there was a request for further training from some of the new editors so that they cons could consolidate their skills. We subsequently set up Wiki Wednesday, which is a regular one hour Zoom session every Wednesday morning that anyone can drop into. And these have been running success successfully now for about six weeks. So what is next? We'll continue to host more editathons and support new editors who wish to contribute to the project. We still have the target of creating 100 new Wikipedia articles before the end of 2021, and we think that we are on track to achieving this. We'll continue to promote and grow the project. And this includes using some of the grant funds to facilitate several activities that are associated with the Australian Women in Religion project. One of these is the digitisation of a significant Australian feminist theological journal. Another is to contribute to the publications about the project, including to future volumes in the Atla Open Press Women in Religion series. One of the most exciting projects that we're planning is a future publication about Australian women in religion, which will focus on women who have been creators and innovators. This monograph will include biographies about Australian women who have made significant contributions to religious and spiritual traditions in Australia, but who don't yet have a Wikipedia page. This publication will continue the great work of previous volumes in the Women in Religion series in creating well-researched secondary sources that will meet Wikipedia's notability requirements for article creation. These sources can then be used to create new Wikipedia articles for the Australian women on our list. Thank you very much for the opportunity to share a little about the Australian Women in Religion project. It's been really fascinating for me to discover something of the lives of the women on our list and some of the amazing contributions that they have made to religious and spiritual traditions in Australia, but also to the social and cultural life of our country in many different fields. At the same time, it's a little disappointing that many of these women were previously unknown to me. Helping to bring to light some of the unrecognised contributions of these women and helping to address knowledge and gender gaps on Wikipedia has been a thoroughly rewarding experience. As a librarian, my involvement with the project has also been a great way to promote libraries and librarians 
as important contributors to open knowledge creation and dissemination. So in conclusion, I invite you to consider joining us in the work of the Australian or the Thousand Women in Religion projects in whatever way you may be able to contribute. Thank you very much for your attention.